Hey everyone and welcome back in to the Direct Selling Accelerator podcast. My name is Sam Hind and in this episode we get the pleasure of hearing from Eric Johnson from Teamsy. Teamsy is an incredible software program designed for direct sellers to help you guys to manage your business. Now, we do hear a little bit about Teamsy, but what we really get talking about in this episode is about relationship marketing. A bit of a buzzword right now, I know, but the thing we loved about this chat was what we uncovered and the opportunity for us to really stop and think about how we want our relationships in our business to look. Eric gives some incredible insights and tips on how to make connections and start conversations with your family and friends in a way that is non-salesy and leaves people feeling positive about your business. Now, by using this approach, I can promise you, you're going to get loads more people approaching you and you're going to walk away from your business and the interactions that you have feeling great about them. So jump on in, have a listen. If you want to structure your business in a way that is manageable, uh, in a way that you feel like you're in control, and certainly in a way that you feel like you're having meaningful conversations with the people in your life, then I definitely recommend you get in and listen to this episode. So I hope you enjoy, and we look forward to seeing you again on the inside. Welcome on in, Eric. I'm really excited today to uh, be able to have this chat with you. Um, we had the fantastic opportunity to meet through Juice Plus. Uh, well, it must be maybe six months ago now, I mm-hmm. would say, where I got the pleasure of listening to you speak to a group of the Juice Plus leaders about um, not only your Teamsy uh, program that you've got, which you're going to tell us about a little bit later on, but also uh, about productivity and relationship marketing. So I thought it'd be a really great opportunity to welcome you on in today, have a bit of a chat, get an opportunity to hear from you and discuss relationship marketing today, which is kind of the the topic of the year at the moment, I think. This is what we've been spending a lot of time chatting about. So welcome. Thank you. Glad to be here. You know, I think um, relationship marketing is something that that I've been teaching for 20 years and it is it is becoming a buzzword now. Um, I think, you know, you and I share a common philosophy in how to approach marketing and sales. And I think more people are coming around to it, um, especially now where we're, we're, well, especially in direct sales, where you have people who aren't traditional salespeople joining the business. And people who are finding, you know, that traditional methods of going for no and just crushing through your list is really uncomfortable. They don't like to do it. They don't want to damage the relationships. They don't want their friends and family to cross the street when they're approaching. And so uh, more and more people are looking for an alternative that's something they can do. And I think relationship marketing is something everyone can do because really all it is is focusing on helping others and building authentic relationships, which is really fun both ways. Yeah. Awesome. And I I love that. We definitely do have that philosophy in common and we've been chatting about that a lot lately. We, um, we've just, uh, released a podcast with Christine Drummond as well, who you might be familiar with who also spoke into relationship marketing and and how she's used that to organically grow her business. I think you're going to speak into that a bit today, Yeah. but whereabouts are you located? So, um, you're obviously in a very different time zone to us right now, which we're going to slowly be able to tell, I think, as we go through this call. Yeah. I'm in San Diego, California. So I'm actually yesterday afternoon for you. (laughs) So how we can tell you how the day panned out, can't we? (laughs) Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, awesome. And we're, um, I, I, I did mention on um, uh, our, actually, this is our first podcast we've recorded from our new studio. So, and we clearly don't have blinds in yet. So I'm going to have to apologize in advance for, you know, me shrinking down, I think, as the, as the sun comes up this way. Uh, but it's quite early in the morning here in comparison to you guys. So thank you very much for taking the time to jump on in and have a bit of a chat. Now, something that really drew me to you initially is uh, you and I have both got a very strong sales background. We've come Mm -hmm. from a very different um, training and industry to many of the people that will be listening to this podcast. And something that I think we both have recognized is that although um, 
uh, direct selling is very much about working from home and controlling uh, your work life and, and also having some control over your income and that financial freedom um, that, that everyone is, is gunning for. The, the fact of the matter is it is still a numbers game. And so building success in your business does come back to numbers. Um, and you're, you've kind of nailed this. You've, you've really uh, spent a lot of time working out how to marry those two together without bringing in the cheesy sales that uh, everyone wants to try to avoid and should be avoiding as well, mm-hmm. let me just say. So can you sort of speak into that for a little moment? Yeah, sure. You know, um, my background, uh, you know this, but the audience does not My background as a business coach for the past 20 years, helping people build their business. And what I found is that once there's a strategy of what needs to be achieved, everybody does well when they have a specific plan and structure to follow. And um, one of the things that has always been important to me is that when you're building your business, you should be able to get all of the income producing activity part of the business done in less than an hour. It's just like, it's incredibly um, uh, fulfilling and it's just kind of cathartic to get it done quickly, right? Yeah. And then you can go about your day doing other things. And so it's always been about structuring, okay, what do you want to achieve? And there, and it does come down to numbers. So how many people will you reach out to and connect to? And how many customers will you follow up with on a daily basis? You know, connecting with your team members to let them know you're thinking about the, how many of those we reach out to. And when we built the, the team CRM software, which I know we're going to talk about later, but we built it to kind of automate that for people where they could say, well, yeah, I want to make hundred thousand dollars a year. And so we could break that down to, this is how many people you need to be connecting with each day. I think, you know, the, the part where people kind of get freaked out by the whole idea of a numbers game mm-hmm. is they, they don't want to be the cheesy salesperson. Right? They don't want to come across as the icky salesperson. And so that's where they start to get uncomfortable. They're like, oh my gosh, so I need to go message all my friends and family and like vomit my business on them. Yeah. And that's where we really do, really want people to switch their thinking from I need to get sales or I need to recruit people to my team and really start thinking about what I need to do is just connect and make people's day. And I call it the make someone's day mindset. It's the center of everything that I do is getting myself in the make someone's day mindset. My only goal when I'm reaching out to people is to make their day. And if you can get focused on that, what happens is you can start to build real relationships with people because you've kind of lowered that defense mechanism. Oh my gosh, she's going to try to sell me something and Mm -hmm. said, you know what? No, I'm not really. I just want to make your day. I want to have a conversation. I want to see if there's some way I can help you. And by having a relationship with somebody over time, it gives you an opportunity at some point to talk about your business and products in a way that's really comfortable without any pressure. Um, But even more importantly is that a relationship is worth so much more than a sale or a recruit because relationships, people who trust you and who, and who enjoy their relationship with you will typically introduce you to many, 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 many people. And so the idea of, of going through a list of relationships as a numbers game to try to get a sale, turning people off and coming across as a icky salesperson, or going through a list of relationships to deepen those relationships and make somebody's day creates many more opportunities. Absolutely. And by the way, it's way more fun and it's way, um, you're less likely to hit burnout quickly doing that. Yeah. I love that so much. And you just, I can just feel kind of my heart lifting as you're speaking about this because Um, I feel like we've been trying to drum this in, but you've just said it in such a beautiful way, um, reaching out just to make someone's day. And I know, uh, you know, initially for some people, the thought might be, well, how does that help me right now? Because I need sales right now. And, um, yes, that may be true, but, um, we know that those relationships that you build and that you strengthen over time also lays an amazingly beautiful foundation for your business long-term as well, because these become those loyal fans and followers that are, you know, are spruiking your name, that are telling everyone about you and and spreading that word of mouth that is so powerful as well. Um, But something that, um, that comes up for me as well is, and, and I'm sure you're going to speak into this, but you know, how do you go about doing that? Because, you know, one of the things that we try to really steer people away from, and, and this is my, um, you know, personal experience from direct selling and, and something that I've brought into the training that we do is that when someone goes into direct selling, typically um, what, what I've noticed has happened over the years is they go straight to how do I sell to all my family and friends? And you sort of touched on this a minute ago 
And so something that we really try to steer people away from doing is that vomiting their business on their family and friends. And so my, my, um, training focuses on how do we do a bit of both? How do we utilize the relationships we have with our family and friends? Because they're still powerful in the growth, particularly initially of our business. And they're the people that are going to connect us with more of the right people. But how do we do that in a tasteful way? How do we bring the business into uh, those relationships with our family and friends without them feeling like uh, we're vomiting the business on them and that we're overstepping the mark and, and misusing those relationships as well? Oh, well, just happens to be my favorite topic to to talk about. So it's all good. (laughs) You knew this. That's why you asked me to talk about it. (laughs) um, You know, I've been teaching this approach for a long time and it's, it's like, like everything else. It's almost sounds too simple, but the bottom line is, you know, have a normal conversation with somebody that find out what's going on in their lives, get caught up, find out how everything's going. If you haven't talked to them in a while, take, you know, take some time to have a conversation. Yeah. You know, see what their kids are up to. How's everything going? You know, just find out. There's a lot going on in the world, right? So people might have a, an update. I call it getting somebody's update. Get their update. Pretend you ran, in, ran into them in the supermarket. What would you, you know, how would you get an update from them? Tell me what's going on in your life. Ask them some questions. And so um, when, you're, when somebody's doing that and they're giving you an update on what's going on in their life, it's really natural for you to do the same thing. And so, um, in fact, it would be strange if you didn't. So when you're telling them about what's going on in your life, you know, how your spouse is doing, what your kids are up to, what you've been doing, you know. Um, Part of what you want to tell them is that, hey, you've started a new home-based business, okay? And um, for for those of you that are listening to this, I would say write this down. Get your notepad out if you haven't been taking any notes and write this down. What you want to share with somebody is what you're doing specifically and why you're passionate about it. Okay, yeah. so what you're doing specifically and why you're passionate about it. Because what happens is, is when you share this way, just in a normal conversation, what you're doing and why you're passionate about it, yeah. almost 100% of the people that, that you're talking to, will they will reply with, oh, wow, good for you, or good on you, or I'm proud of you, great for you. Yeah. Which is a totally different way than people typically receive the news that you're doing a direct sales business, Yeah. right? And so, for example, I'll just give you an example. Years ago, when I, when I fell into direct sales, I was working um, with a company that specialized in nutrition, weight loss, and things like that. So I would tell my story. You know, I don't know, I don't know if I told you um, what happened with me, but I recently lost 60 pounds in three months. And, um, and I got fit. You know, it's just, it was a life-changing experience. Mm-hmm. It changed the way I interacted with my children. It made me feel stronger and better. I found that I was more creative at work, had more energy. I mean, it was just a really incredible experience for me to go through that health transformation. And it made me feel incredibly passionate about helping other people do the same. In fact, I started a home-based business with that company so that I could continue to help other people do it. And, and people would go, oh, wow, that's cool. Good for you. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Okay. And so this is how you introduce the business. Now, it's, it's more fun. It's more exciting. Whether or not they're interested at all, doesn't, you've never, you haven't done anything to offend them or push them away, right? And so, so having this conversation and sharing what I'm doing and why I'm passionate about it, it allows me to just ask somebody based on their response to me, you know, hey, let me know. You know, Sam, if you'd like to learn more about what I'm doing or about the products, let me know. Or I'd be happy to get you more information. Yep. You know, just simple like that. And then people would, will tell you, yeah, maybe I would like some more information. Great. Now let's, well, you know, this isn't the time for it, but let's, let's jump on a call Let you know, we'll schedule something so we can talk a little bit more about it and get you some more information. But you know, um, that's the easy way to uncover people who are may, might be interested. Yeah. The, the thing that, the thing that drives me insane about this industry is we're trained to ask the question, are you interested? And when people say no, we throw them away. Yeah. We throw them no, away. No is not right now, right? It's not no, it's not right now. Well, most, I mean, what rational human being is going to say yes that quickly? <laughs> Very yeah. few, right? Yeah. I mean, usually those are the people who love you. You know, I had people that were like, I, whatever you have, I'll, I'll buy it because I love you and I want to support you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. I'll take your order, right? So that'll be a once off the- order. That won't be something that keeps your business going. That's a, I'll just keep you quiet for now order. Yeah. But you know, um, I think when somebody says, nah, um, I'm, I'm happy for you and what you're doing, but I'm really not interested in it myself. 
but thank, but thank you for telling me about it, which mm-hmm. is, a, which is a very common response. That's actually a great place for you in positioning your business, because yeah. here's what I want you guys to understand. We're in the business of building advocates, not just customers. Yeah. An advocate is somebody who will tell other people about you actively. Right. And so when somebody says, no, thanks, Eric, I'm not interested in that. This is what you do. You just say, oh, no worries. Hey, you know what? It was great connecting. I really enjoyed chatting with you today. Could you do me a favor though? If you do come across somebody that you care about who needs help in this area, and whatever that area is, is the problem you solve. Could you introduce them to me? Because I'm on a mission to help as many people as I can. Yeah, I love that. That's so good. That's what I call that planting the seed. It's so simple. But when you do that, what you have done is you have started to train these people that they will bring other people to your business. When they say, yeah, even if they don't really mean it, when they just kind of say, yeah, I'll do that. I'll keep, my, I'll keep my eyes open for somebody. You actually planted that in their mind. And when somebody says, in using my example, man, I need to lose 20 kilos. I know that's a lot, right? Because I'm thinking <laughs> in pounds, but you get the idea. They're going to yeah. go, oh, well, you should talk to my, you should talk to Eric. That's what he's, he does that for a living. Yeah. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll introduce you guys on Facebook. So it starts to build this um, with your, with the people you're talking to, it starts to build this awareness of the mission that you're on. And it's mm-hmm. almost like you're recruiting an army to, to be yeah. on this mission with you. Yeah. Yeah. And I, 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 it really, really does. And, you know, as you're talking, I'm also thinking about, um, you know, like we're talking a lot here about planting seeds and, and long-term growth, not necessarily the right now growth. And I'm sure we can talk about that in a little sec, but the thing that's really stands out for me is when you reach out in that way and people know what you do and, and they say, this isn't for me or not right now. And, and I've been one of those people. In fact, uh, I think a lot of us say no, because of the stereotype we have of the way that people have in the past behaved in this industry. And we think if I say yes, um, are they going to start hounding me and am I going to be able to get rid of them? Now we all know that that's not the industry. Now we know, but a lot of the people out there that are not familiar with the changes that have happened in this industry and the, the amazing uh, life changing um, uh, transformations that we've seen in so many people, a lot of people out there that are not in the middle of that are unaware of, of where the industry is now, particularly in Australia. And I don't know how it's different for you, yeah. uh, but I know here in Australia, it's a very, very different uh, industry than what it was 10, 15 years ago. And so the thing is that if, if I have that conversation with someone and, and they've, they've come to me and they've said, this is what I do. You know, I'm, I'm really excited. I've just lost all this weight. They're putting it out there and letting me know. I'm not going to jump on it necessarily straight away. But later on, when I get to a point where I've, let's say, been in quarantine for three weeks and I'm feeling, you know, I could right. really do with a bit of weight loss right now. I sure. know who I'm going to reach out to because that person was respectful. They didn't hound me, but they also made me aware and being aware of what someone's doing and what they're passionate about. And also what you'll find will happen, I think, is that people will begin to watch your behavior online. So they'll begin to watch how you interact with everybody else. Are you hassling people, uh, you know, or are you building genuine relationships and are you sticking with it? You know, is it something that you actually really are, um, you know, passionate about. And when they can see that, that you really do believe in this and you are being respectful uh, in your approach, then they'll feel safer to come to you and say, hey, actually, do you mind telling me a little bit more about it? Um, that's been my experience. I don't know yeah. if, if that's how you found it's worked at, at your end, but certainly for me, that's what I've observed is happening now. Well, absolutely. I mean, part of the reason why you and I have connected is because you teach people how to create that authentic presence online and in their social media. And that's something that, that I feel is, is huge because no matter what business you're in, people are going to go, they're going to, half of their decision about you is going to be based on what they see on your social media. I think a lot of people get caught up in social media is about creating leads or creating business opportunities. And my philosophy has always been your social media is about building trust. People are going to go to your social media to see, is this somebody I can trust? And they want to know that. And the way you present yourself and your business, it all matters. You know, one of the things that I always talk about is, you know, there's two things, there's two huge things that, um, well, there's actually four. So let me just give you all four of them. There's four (laughs) things that build trust, right? There's, there's, um, 
chemistry. So do I like you? Are you likable? Right? Do, you, do I like you? And the second piece is character. Are you somebody of character? Do I see that you're somebody who cares about other people? You know, and they should be able to go to your um, Instagram or Facebook or whatever and see that, that this is somebody of character. Everything that you're doing, it's not just your business things, right? It's how you, how you behave and how you comport yourself out in the world. I always joke about the way you drive your car on the highway is as much about whether I want to do business with you as how you follow up on customers. It's all about character, right? The other piece I would need to know is competence. Do you know what you're talking about? I mean, do you understand how your products work, how your compensation plan works? Are you somebody competent enough that I want to do business with? Nobody wants to do business with an incompetent. Yep. Right? And so these are all things that you need to demonstrate in your relationships, talking one-on-one -on -one and in your social media channels. And then the fourth one, which is the most important is consistency. Yep. Nobody, nobody's going to trust you because you did something once. They need to know that you're consistent. And part of that consistency is being consistent on what, on the content you're putting on your social media. How consistent are you? Are you consistently showing that character, that competence, the chemistry, building a relationship with me virtually, right? Yep. And then being consistent. This is the other piece, Sam. This is where Teams and, and kind of my area comes in. Being consistent with reaching out one-on-one -on -one with people. Not yeah. just the first time where you have the conversation, you show, share your passion and you know, what you're doing and why you're passionate about it. But then three months later, following up again with a, hey, it's been three months. How the heck are you? What's going on? It's been a while since we connected. And consistently being there, connecting, right? Yep. Because it's not just that we had a great conversation and you feel good about me and now you're going to think of me when you need me. Yep. The, the truth is, is you may think of me, but never reach out. So I need to be there present so that you're like, oh, I'm glad you reached out. I've been meaning to reach out to you, which is the most common thing that you get when you're staying in touch with people is I've been yeah. meaning to talk to you or, you know. Yeah. So. Well, actually, interesting you say that because you and I have been connecting uh, here and there over the last six months and um, you reached out to me only a few weeks ago and you said, hey, you know, just reaching out, how are you doing? And I was like, actually... <laughs> I've been meaning to speak to you about doing this podcast episode and you're like, great, let's tee it up. So I think that's so important in, in so many ways. And, you know, what I do really appreciate is you remember the people that do that. I got a, a message from someone a couple of days ago. I, I've got to laugh because she, she sent me a message and I know that she's in the corporate world. And the message was, I'm just checking in to see how you're doing. Now, this is someone I haven't heard from for over a year. So when she did it, I was like, is she in direct sales now? <laughs> she <laughs> must know. <laughs> so I'm curious. I'm going to find that out. I'll, I'll report back and tell you guys. But it just, I remembered, it just made me feel good for the rest of the day. She made my day because she yeah. cared enough to check in. And, and I think, you know, by us having no intention to sell when we reach out initially, when we speak with someone, I know that that's essentially what we want in the long term. But if we can be happy with the fact that we have made someone's day and just care about that, then that's going to show through because let's face it, people are not stupid. And I think it's transparent when we come forward with an agenda. Uh, yeah. So let's, let's talk now, Eric, because I think everyone wants to know a little bit about Teamsy and I, I'm, sure. I'm, you know, I'm a little bit disappointed. I've got to say, this is my, um, my sales nature coming out here. I'm a little bit disappointed. I don't currently have a major use for it because I love the program so much or the, the software so much. When you demonstrated it the first time, I was like, I wish this was around when, uh, when I could have used it when I was in direct selling. But you know, what I would love to do is be able to, you know, for those that feel that this is something that could really help them right now, yeah. Uh, I think it'd be great to sort of put it forward and tell people a little bit about it. But just as we get into that, I do want to um, address the fact that right now when we're recording this, we are currently in quarantine. So everyone's locked in their homes. Uh, you and I both have four kids each, right? Yep. So we're dealing with, you know, just the madness of trying to run a business while homeschooling children. Um, and trying to keep sane all at the same time, which really is like, you know, pushing a boulder uphill. It's not possible, is it? <laughs> Sanity is overrated. <laughs> uh, I, I've seen some really great memes going around about uh, the fact that the next generation, we should be really worried because they've all been homeschooled and taught by day drinkers. <laughs> right, exactly. 
So let's talk a little bit about productivity yeah. now and, and how people can structure that building and growth of their business and this communication method, the relationship building, relationship marketing that we've been speaking about. So I'll hand over Absolutely. to you and let you talk. About okay. That. So one thing I just want to say, just to sum up everything we've talked about is for relationship marketing to work, your heart needs to be in the right place. Yeah. So as you said, you know, the, if you have an, an agenda, people will, will, will feel that. So you need to be understanding coming from a place that what I'm doing is going to help people. I really want to help people with this and I'm going to find the people who need it and help them. And when your heart is in that place, it's going to work, right? The thing is, you know, we're under quarantine and we're home and it's crazy, but life's crazy no matter what. And so the way I look at productivity is it needs to be able to be done in a very small amount of time. If you could set aside one hour to be focused on productivity, that's perfect. In fact, we structured Teamsy, which is, which is the software company I own, Teamsy.com. We structured that around the idea of a power hour that you would do it in one hour. But there's a lot of people who don't even have an hour. And so to have the structure to be able to say, well, I've got 10 minutes. I can do yeah. this for 10 minutes and then I'll pick it up again later for another 10 minutes. And they can string that hour together throughout the day and know that they've done everything they need to be doing proactively in their business. Mm -hmm. It's huge because it's about, you know, we just talked about building trust and building relationships. The consistency is the huge piece. And, you know, Sam, all honesty, I didn't, I'm not good enough to remember that we hadn't talked in a few months. I went into Teamsy and it said, reach out to Sam. Are. Yep. Um, Teamsy said, oh, Sam, reach out to Sam and see how she's doing. And so I did. It wasn't because I thought, uh, I don't know, maybe we'll do a training together or maybe something will happen. I just thought, here's somebody that I'd like to be connected with. So I should reach out. And so, um, you know, coming through with just when somebody comes up, having a system that just says, reach out to this person. And all you do is reach out to, to make their day. And some people don't know how to do that. So we built in the yeah. team, we built simple scripts, things like, you know, how are you? How are things going? Yeah. I love Tell those me. scripts that you've got there. Cause a lot of people are saying, well, how, you know, what do I say? But you've actually got the scripts ready that people can, they can pick the one that's most appropriate. They can tailor them if they want to. I love that setup. It's funny because, um, you know, they're not sales scripts by any means because I, I hate those in general. Yeah. But I, I actually have somebody I've been working with for years. Her name's Barbara and she calls them MSDs, which, you know, makes someone's days. Oh, and I love I it. Thought that was, isn't that funny? I was like, Greg, what did you say? So what, what? what are you dropping in your business? MSDs. I'm dropping MSDs all day. So, you know, make someone day messages. So but, you know, it, it, um, it does make their day. And we're in a situation now, you know, we're in quarantine right now. We don't know what's going to happen. What, you know, by the time you're listening mm -hmm. to this podcast, we may still be in quarantine. Who knows right? where we'll be? <laughs> Who, Who knows? knows but either on. way, we're either way. I mean, the drama, the trauma of this is still going to be on us and just reaching out to us. How are you? How are your family doing? How are you guys mm -hmm. doing? And you know, the thing is, is that when they respond, it's a great opportunity to help somebody in any way, you know, you know, we're talking about, we, um, you and I were talking about our kids running around. And I, I, one of them was, I don't know if you guys could hear it through my microphone, but there was a full scream session going on outside my door a minute ago. <laughs> no, we couldn't hear it. <laughs> and I was, you know, I was waiting about three seconds to see if my wife was, was there or if I was going to have to jump out. You just don't know. Right. But yeah. Um, the, the bottom line is, is that, you know, you could find ways to help. I, I, a good, uh, a good friend of mine who's in direct sales here in the States, she homeschooled her kids already, you know, before this. So she's been reaching out with resources to, oh, to people. So good. Can she on, reach out to me? I need help desperately. <laughs> yeah. I mean, she was, she posted a bunch of links on her, on her Facebook and Instagram saying, here's some great resources for those of you who have no idea what to get your kids doing, keep yeah. them productive right now. And so, and I thought, well, this is great. It had nothing to do with her direct sales business. It was direct value that helps people right now. Love it. You know? Yeah. Um, and so things, you know, think about ways that you can help people as you're having conversations with them. It's all about trust. And here's the thing I want to say, kind of going back to something that you said a little while ago about the reputation of direct sales, mm -hmm. your company doesn't really matter. It, it's the relationship with yep. you that matters. It's the trust with yep. you that matters as you build trust and character with people, you're building trust in the, in the brand that you represent. Yeah. Absolutely. And, um, I mean, it matters. They can't be, they can't be you know, crooked, but most well, of yeah. them are pretty, most of them are pretty up and up companies. The yeah. point is, is it's the trust you're building. Yeah. And absolutely. they could still completely distrust direct sales, but be your customer and happy for it because yeah. they trust you. So that's the huge thing. What Teamsy is, is it's team, T-E-A-M-Z-Y.com, Teamsy.com. Um, for those of you listening, if you want to check it out, you can get a 30 day free trial on that at that URL, awesome. try it for free. We'll, we'll pop the link in the podcast notes as well. 
there'll be a link. So it's a, it's a contact manager. Basically what you do with Teamsy is you put all of your contacts in there. So everybody, you know, you put your Facebook friends, your Instagram followers, get everybody in Teamsy in one place. And, and then what Teamsy does is it helps you prioritize that list. So it gets set on automatic, right? So what you do is you set a goal. Let's say you want to make a hundred thousand dollars a year. Great. Teamsy will tell you how many people to connect with on a daily basis. And each day when you come into Teamsy, it'll tell you, here's who's up next. Reach out to this person. Yeah. So nobody falls nice. through the cracks, just keeps you cycling through. And then what, what I love about it is you may only work for 20 minutes and it says you're done. Yep. You hit today's goal. You can just go back to your crazy life, which is fine. <laughs> and you've reached out to what, however many people, you know, yeah. you know, 15 people or whatever, you've sent messages to them to reach out. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, maybe later in the day, you've got a little time set aside where you, you go hide in the, in my house, we hide in the bathroom, right? From our kids <laughs> and respond to messages. I love it. Where's daddy? He's in the bathroom. What's he doing? Oh, he's What's working. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, it's such a real thing right now though. Really. It's just, the kids are like, what mom, why are you in the pantry with the door shut? <laughs> you don't need to know. <laughs> Trying to find something. No, but seriously, it's, you know, it makes it really easy, you know, and it lives in your computer. It's in your phone. So if you've got yeah. five minutes, you can message a couple of people and make their day. It becomes really, um, I feel like it's really fulfilling. You know, you and I talked about where we come from faith, from a faith perspective. And the thing that I love, you know, I'm, I won't get into that. I promised you I wouldn't do that. But um, <laughs> what I, I'm also a, a student of social science. I find yep. it fascinating, right? They mm -hmm. study people and what motivates them. And, it, and, and by the way, it's all congruent with each other. But yep. one of the things that they have found is that people really aren't money motivated. You think they are, right? Mm -hmm. You think that people are money motivated, but um, they've done all these studies and with companies who have given people a pay increase and they have not ever seen a measurable increase in productivity based on a pay increase. Mm -hmm. What makes people productive, there's two main motivators that make people productive. One is status. People are seeking status. They want to feel yeah. like they're at a higher status than they were. And I think in direct sales, I think the corporations do a good job with rewarding people with status upgrades, right? Yep. But the number one thing that motivates people is relationship mm -hmm. and connection, right? And so this is what we're building is we're building connection with people. Um, and the other thing that I find really interesting, they've done all these happiness studies. And I don't know if you've probably read some of the books on what makes people happy. Yeah. The number one thing that makes people happy is serving others. Yep. Is service, helping. That's what brings people happiness. It's not having a pile of money and being able to, you know, fly away on a private jet. It's the ability to help other people is what lifts people up. And so if you can build a business based on helping people and building relationships, not only can you actually make a good income, which is great, but it brings a ha it builds happiness. It makes it yep. fun. Yeah. You know? I love that and so much. It's so perfect. She summed it up it, beautifully. It's huge because you dread it. It's like, oh, I got to go do my power hour. And then you've done it. And it's like, wow, I feel great. <laughs> yeah. That feels awesome. You know, people are excited to hear from me. Thank you so much yeah. for reaching out, you know? <laughs> but it's so, not just one way though, is it? I mean, it comes back to you and, and when you need it, you've also got those relationships there. And it's important to remember that you know, building those networks and those connections is, it, it's for both sides. It's not just the other person. You know, I had somebody that was uh, working with Teamsy who, who her husband passed away suddenly mm -hmm. and she was destroyed, you know, for obvious reasons, she was crushed. And um, she, she still did her power hour where she was reaching out to people. Yep. And she said it made her, it was, she realized it was for her. Yeah. But she was connecting and the people she was reaching out to were lifting her up. And yeah. so by avoiding the feeling of, I want to hide, she actually was able to lift herself up and bring a lot of comfort to herself by reaching yeah. out to people and just connecting yeah, with them. So and then people were saying, I can't believe you are reaching out to me. How are you? Yeah. You know? And yeah. I just think, you know, um, people are really hungry for connection. You know, we're in quarantine, so we can't, we, lit we literally can't connect with people. We need anymore. it now more than ever. And let's face it, lots of us have actually got the time to be able to, um, to do it too. Well, people are responding, whereas mm -hmm. before they were too busy to respond, mm -hmm. um, people are, are spending 
a ridiculous amount of time on social media looking, you know, consuming it. I mean, I, I wish that I wish that Apple would give the screen time report um, increase worldwide this Oh, <laughs> well, uh, I, I saw a little <laughs> report come through from Facebook yesterday that the usage on Facebook at the moment, the video consumption is up by 600% in the last two weeks. Yeah. So, so I think that's going to keep climbing. Um, I do actually have a really quick question for you about Teamsy just before we wrap up. Mm-hmm because I'm, I'm conscious of, uh, of how long we've been talking for. And I feel like we could keep talking about this for, for uh, forever because there's, there's so much to all of it. And maybe we can, you know, down the track arrange to have another conversation about this if, um, uh, if we feel that it, we could provide some more value in this space. But I do want to ask, um, because we've got to, direct selling, you've got your party plan and you've got your network marketing. And I know that the network marketers right now are hearing and seeing the value in, in what you've been speaking about. Can we just speak into party plan for a minute and talk about whether Teamsy is also suitable for party planners and what that might look like? Oh, yeah. Well, absolutely. It's the same thing. It's about building relationships, right? And bringing people together. And right now, it's, uh, doing everything virtually makes it so easy. People may never go back to having in-person parties after this, right? It makes it so incredibly easy. You know, um, I'm, I'm in this beautiful office and I'm so grateful. I mean, thank God that I have this. But I, you see, I don't know if you, if you knew, Sam, where I started this business five years ago. It was in a shed. We laughed about your shed. Your shed is yeah. actually a beautiful studio <laughs> that you guys have built. I yeah, we're in a, the shed I, right now, yeah. I had an actual shed from, wow, okay. from, from the home improvement store that was in my backyard, the kind people put their lawnmower in. I mean, it, yeah. was un, it was not insulated. It was in my backyard. I ran an extension cord out and I, and I was in the shed and I, and I, you know, I painted the wall white behind me and turned on the camera. Wow. And, and it was a sweat pouring down my face in the summer doing webinars and trainings. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and then in the morning, you know, San Diego is not too cold, not too cold. It's not like, like, it gets where you are, but still, you know, it's still cold enough that I'm shivering in the morning and sweating in the afternoon. Um, out in my shed. And, you know, the point is, is that um, the whole, my whole business was built virtually and creating events and getting people on. And so I think it's, I think now there's a great opportunity for people to do that, but, but you got to have a, you have to have a system to manage who you're reaching out to, who you're inviting, who actually showed, um, who didn't show. You need to know, right. You need to know who did, who showed and who showed interest and who didn't so that you're following up properly. The follow-up is the most important part. You mentioned earlier, you know, this is more of a long-term thing, but it's not either staying in touch with people. You're going to uncover people every single month who are ready. Yeah. Yeah. That's you so know? true. Yeah. But, but then most, you, so you'll be uncovering people who are ready now and then people who might be ready six months from now, you've got to make sure that nobody's falling through the cracks, mm-hmm. you know, so that you can consistently um, bring people, bring people through. And, yeah. you know, if you're, if you're throwing parties, um, virtually or in person, you know, somebody may not come. You may be inviting the same person over and over and over before you finally get a chance to share with them. So you yeah. have to be able to track all that in a way that makes sense. And again, figuring out how to build interest in those, in those events without, you know, be, be, beating people over the head, finding ways that it solves their problems for them. Yeah. So I think um, for sure, I mean, we've got both, both types in Teamsy. I think, you know, however you're doing business, we've even got a general small business Teamsy that supports people that any sort of sole proprietor or small business owner that needs a reliable contact management system. They want to build relationships. We've got people from every business you could imagine oh, using fantastic. a small business version of Teamsy yep. to, to manage their business and relationships. Yep. That's awesome. Uh, well, guys, we're going to put that link into the show notes so you can jump in and check out Teamsy. I'm going to check it out. I'm going to start using it. I think this will be a great way uh, for me to systemize that time in my business because uh, I can see value in it just for us. And, and you know, where um, I think a lot of our students in our online courses right now are really looking for that structure. So um, thank you very, very much for uh, taking the time today to speak to us about that. And I have taken a ton of notes here while you've been speaking just about the relationship marketing side of things. There's a few things that, you know, I I really took from what you said, particularly when you talked about building trust. I think that's, you know, the the four elements of building trust, chemistry, character, competence, and consistency. To me, that's, that's really powerful. But also what really stood out to me was where you said that half the decision that someone makes about you will be based 
on your behavior on social media. And it's mm-hmm. so, so true. And we don't really, you can see this light right now. <laughs> it's a glow. It's a glow. It's a that glow. You've got. The angels are coming down. So yeah, I just want to thank you for that because I think if uh, hopefully people have taken a lot of little nuggets of gold out of that, I know I certainly have. And I really, really, really appreciate you taking the time today to, to, um, to spend with us. So thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It was fun. Yep. Awesome. All right, guys. So if you want to uh, jump in and check out the, uh, the link, uh, do that. You'll get your, was it a 30 day free trial, Eric, if they decide to give it a go? 30 day free trial. Brilliant. Thank you so much. And, um, and stay safe over there. Thank you. You too. (laughs) Awesome. Thanks, Eric.